Lower Manhattan, New York City, September 11, 2001. This tragic event marked the declaration of a global war on terror led by the United States government and its allies. The world changed after 9-11. September the 11th, for me, was a wake-up call. Hello, everyone. Just a little update on what's going on over in Scotland at IndyCamp. There is an eviction going on. They want to evict these demonstrators from public property in Scotland because they want to reinstitute God's law in Scotland. Now, this is very important for many reasons, and I'm only going to scratch the surface. I'll provide the links so that you can do your own little research. You can read these articles. But what took place today basically was the court decided to evict them. And what happened was the people who were going to be evicted decided to appeal. This is Twitter. Here we have an article that's posted on BBC News Scotland. The date set for IndyCamp appeal against Hollywood eviction. The campers have launched an appeal against their eviction from Hollywood. Appeals against the decision to evict independence campaigners from outside the Scottish Parliament will be heard at the Court of Session in October. Lord Turnbull ruled that the IndyCamp Camp group should be evicted from their Hollywood camp after a lengthy case. Four different groups have lodged appeals against the ruling. The Inner House will consider the case on 19 and 20th of October after Lord Malcolm accepted calls to fast track it. The court ruled against the campers in July after a seven month legal battle when Lord Turnbull concluded that evicting the Indy camp would not breach their human rights. He criticized the campaigners who want to remain outside Holyrood until Scotland is independent as, quote, rather selfish or even arrogant for seeking long-term occupation of the site, saying that they had shown, quote, open disregard, end quote, for others. The campers maintain that they have the right to protest and freedom of assembly at Hollywood and appeal against Lord Turnbull's judgment. Parliament Chief Executive Sir Paul Grice pushed for an accelerated appeal process but warned MSPs that the intrasurgents of those occupying the camp could see the standoff continue for some time. The group have been ordered to quit the camp which sits outside the Scottish Parliament. The campers who originally styled themselves as sovereign and indigenous peoples of Scotland have split into a number of different groups for the appeal. Four different arguments will be heard on the October sitting. Arthur Gimmel, who was the second respondent of the original case, said that his arguments had affected Lord Turnbull's decision on the vigil negatively and said he wanted his case heard separately. Some of the campers earlier issued a written letter distancing themselves from the views of another respondent, Richard McFarlane, who had claimed in court that Christ had returned on earth and had given permission to the camp to use the parliamentary estate. He also made a separate case on behalf of himself and another respondent. Two of the campers continue to style themselves as the sovereign and indigenous peoples, one of them who asked to be referred to in court only as David, demanded that a jury sit on the case as he claimed that a trial by the state is illegal and the court might be inept or corrupt. The remaining four respondents will make a fourth case and have stated their intention to appoint Mr. Keatings as a lay representative. Lord Malcolm, who declined a call from David to recuse him from the case, as well as rejecting bringing it in a jury, said the court would consider all four arguments at a two-day hearing in October. Now, why is this important?
She was to uphold God's laws there in England, but she broke this vow. Let me read this little article about why Elizabeth Mountbatten is the greatest criminal on earth by a long margin. This was posted by Philip on July 28, 2016. By the time of the 1953 coronation, the 4,000-year-old British coronation stone, also known as Jacob's Pillow Stone, Christ's Throne, had already been taken back to Scotland, 4 a.m. Christmas morning in 1950, from whence it came in the year 1296 with Edward I Longshanks and a fake copy returned in its place so that Mrs. Elizabeth A. M. Battenberg could not lawfully be crowned. God inspired and helped the four Scottish nationalists led by Ian Hamilton to succeed in the removal because his eldest son Archangel Michael, being known on earth as Christ, had already incarnated into a human body that was born in Sheffield in 1948. Mrs. Elizabeth Battenberg and the people around her absolutely must have known that the original Palestine porphyry granite coronation stone that all true Israel kings were crowned upon looked like and that it is smoother and more rounded and heavier than the obviously unfinished rough Scottish Perthshire sandstone copy. Here's a couple of pictures of the two coronation stones the real one and the fake one. So, had she been honest about the swap, like her grandmother Queen Victoria promised that if Christ returned during her reign, she would immediately step down and they would have gone and looked for him. Like the three wise men did 2,000 years ago, none of the wars, disasters, pestilence, molestation, poverty, theft, earth destruction, etc., etc., and now escalating would have happened free will remember we have free will until the last day and she herself would not have committed high treason against god and christ and fraudulently made herself the richest person on earth and a war criminal and a mass murderer and have been tempted into her crimes against humanity that she had been charged for and impoverished the British people, the whole commonwealth, etc., common poverty in reality, and led them in their wholesale breaking of the laws of God in fraudulent legislation via her headship of the bar, the British accreditation register for all her judges and barristers, advocates, etc., worldwide. No other criminal comes close to Mrs. Battenberg in the scale and the extent of her crimes, except maybe Satan himself. Her crimes are presented in a lawful challenge to her fraudulent court jurisdiction, J for Justice, at jforjustice.net forward slash challenge. The document, jforjustice.net forward slash challenge forward slash zip, exhibits for British countries and a bulletproofloaw.wordpress.com for and there are two challenges happening right now in the courts of Scotland and Gibraltar. She is the criminal and not the majority who are fraudulently charged for her crimes that are not crimes but are fraudulent legislation, contraventions and are fraud. It's the greatest scam on earth. The biggest criminal is prosecuting the innocent for wealth, for power, for Satan, all of them. Even Rothschild's giant worldwide fake money and usury central banking scam that makes all the wars and the earth destroying technology and poverty possible on a massive scale was and still is only possible because of her lack of upfront honesty about her fake coronation and fraudulent legislation by her royal assent which permits it which contravenes her coronation oath. The King of Kings Bible at jatruth.net Deuteronomy 520 Neither shalt 
thou tell lies, not even to thyself, neither to nor against thy neighbor. Her crimes are capital, which calls for the death penalty, which includes all those who aid in a bet her scam. The King of Kings Bible at Jatruth.net, the fifth book of God's law, Deuteronomy 17.10, and thou shalt do according to the sentence, which they of that place which the I am shall choose, shall show thee, and thou shalt observe to do according to all that thy inform thee. 17.11 According to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee, and according to the judgment which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline to do the sentence which they shall show thee, and turn not away from it to the right hand nor to the left. 17.12 And the man that will do presumptuously, and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to the minister, there before the I am thy God, or unto judge, even that the man shall die, and thus thou shalt put away evil from Israel. Jesus says in Matthew 5.17, Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. 518. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no way pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. 519. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. 520. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the lawyers and the politicians, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. A couple of links for the sources. Tony Farrell sent the Christmas message to Elizabeth. Hannah Michaels, wordpress.com. All these links will be provided below. And this explains exactly why this petition that's going on in Scotland is so important. the bar in the United States of America in which all laws are made in the United States are made by these attorneys who swear allegiance to the bar which is swearing allegiance to the crown the Queen of England. One of the biggest lies going on in the United States right now is that they are separate and sovereign from the crown and the Queen of England and nothing could be farther from the truth. All attorneys that are passing this false legislation in the United States in the name of the Constitution is a corruption by satanic man. We should be following the laws of God. The way you defeat the New World Order is by dethroning the Queen, cutting the head off the snake. We are the true Israelites if we keep the covenant of God, and if we don't, we shall burn on the last day of judgment, which is closer than everybody thinks. Okay guys, live in love. Peace.